Hello, everyone, and welcome to Really Old Movies. I'm your host, Harrison Scullin, and today with my very special guest, Evan, we'll be discussing our five, and in his case, six, intro to classic movies. So without further ado, let me bring on Evan. How's it going? Doing well. Well, I'm a little under the weather, so if you hear it in my voice, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so if he disappears, you'll know why. <laughs> I'll try not to sneeze or cough up on on with the mic on or the camera on. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the, spit take, right? That's right. Good thing we don't have smell vision and all that, right? Are we all? Are I smell good. Back? I took a shower today. Well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let me bring up all these here. So make sure to follow Evan down here below at Pop Culture Thirty Three. And why don't you talk a little bit about your channel and stuff before we get started? Um, my channel is not much on it. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's been on pause. I lots of life stuff and I haven't wanted to relaunch it and start printing stuff out until I can continually do it. But what I do is I like to look at many different aspects of pop culture items, mostly movies, but I like to dabble in music, look at the historical impact. Um, um, my specialty is Disney. So and there's a lot of Disney on it. So it's a um, channel that I get to just share my thoughts and opinions on what I watch and consume. Is that the best way? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, definitely check it out, guys. He's got great videos about, uh, like, I liked your Snow White one and Sleeping Beauty and all that. So, yeah, make sure to follow his channel. And and uh, we didn't really talk about this beforehand, but maybe we could talk a little bit about our future ideas we want to do together a little bit. Go right ahead, my friend. All right. <laughs> Well, we're thinking of launching a website, and the name for that, uh, have we solidified that yet? I, I don't know if we want to. I, 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 I haven't. Um, I'm trying to figure <laughs> out if we, the, no, the domain is available, so probably don't say the name until okay. we get that sealed. Until we get that sealed. <laughs> but basically, the idea of it is we'll be doing reviews on there, and then also trying to incorporate some videos and video essays, that sort of thing. So I'm really excited for that. Yeah, it's just, I think, a way for us to, we seem to have a kindred spirit on how we want to discuss film. We don't always agree, but we, I think we agree on our love for film and what we want to see. So, <coughs> sorry. So, and I think we both have a passion for writing too. So we wanted to incorporate a website where we could write, we could do our video, we could figure out the best medium to share our thoughts and ideas and so um and so the the website will be a hub for both of our channels and and kind of see what comes out of that mm -hmm. yep and then also on top of that we're thinking of doing videos and live streams kind of like this one where together we're going to talk about topics maybe we'll have guests that sort of thing so yeah you'll see more of us together my best friend <laughs> yep <laughs> Exactly. Well, um, let's talk a little bit about this idea we were discussing on tonight's episode. So I was trying to think of an idea of, you know, what, what's a way we can have people, you know, get interested and intrigued with old movies? Because, you know, that's something I'm really passionate about. But you know, where do people really start? Right. And so we kind of just decided to come up with movies that maybe not necessarily are the most popular ones, the ones everyone talks about, you know, like Gone with the Wind or Casablanca and all of those. Some of those may show up here, but um, other ones that aren't necessarily the ones you hear about all the time. So, yeah. So without further ado, let's bring up the slideshow. So, let's bring it up. Let's go. Intro to classic movies. And what we'll be doing is we'll be each going back and forth talking about our individual films and, you know, kind of talking about uh, what you like about it. And then also how you think it would help someone start watching old movies. Yeah. So without further ado, let's go to Evan. He picked six movies. His number six. Yeah, yeah, I cheated. I I cheated. I cheated. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so I cheated like three times on this list. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I was, um so this one double because this one's technically outside of the years you cover. Yep. Am I right? 
I, it's like, but it's not far. It's like three years or something like that. It's not too far outside of the perimeters that I was given. And I was like, um, and then it's number six and not five. But I just watched this, I want to say, at the beginning of this year. I was on HBO Max. I put it on. And I just thought to myself, it just such a cool edited music. It's such a movie of its time. And it's in, it's such a inviting movie. So he plays kind of a private detective and he has to do this story of finding something. I don't want to spoil it, but Hmm. it is so cool how it does the intro in itself. I literally texted my friend and said, Hey, you have HBO max go and watch the first 15 minutes of this film because he's big into editing and he did and it and how it beats things like he goes and does it's just incredible on how it does so i truly think when someone says i don't really like movies from the 60s i don't really like movies from the 70s this is where i would point to them of saying this is just a fun goofball movie paul newman everyone knows paul newman mm-hmm. and the way they edit it is not your typical you know french connection all the president's men, like what you know from the 70s, Godfather, this is fun, lightweight, but still has kind of a cool, I would put it more on like Columbo style of mm. um, storytelling. And it was just a cool, upbeat movie and uh, has a, has a, he's a mystery to solve. And it was, it was well edited. That's what I'm pointing out getting that movie buff that only likes the nineties and the 2000s talks about all the technology. Well, go back and look at what this does. And, you know, and often these movies are not talked about like Hitchcock gets talked about editing. Some of the bigger yeah. movies, um, Citizen Kane gets talked about editing, but some of these smaller movies we, we forget about, we don't have the conversations um, in, in that realm because we, we forget that when we, when we go back and look at history and we see the top tens and the top whatever, those are the cream of the crop. You uh, you didn't get the trash with it. You didn't get the mediocre stuff. We right. just remember the best stuff. And that just goes back. I mean, you're a little bit older, but you're going to start seeing that where your generation, like what music you listen when you were like 12 and 16, you're going to go, wait, there's a whole bunch of other music that I said I didn't like because I didn't like it compared to that, but I'll go back and listen to it. I do like it because I just didn't give it a chance back then. And it goes with movies. And I think certain movies get pushed under. And with Paul Newman, I'm rambling. Paul Newman, you know, cool. Yeah, Cool Hand Luke, Butch Cassidy. you got all these and you forget about these smaller Paul Newman movies. And he's just really great. Yeah. I haven't had the chance to see this one, but... Uh, I do, I do like the poster for it, and we'll see at the end here. I have a little graphic that has all of ours in order, but yeah, I think that's really cool. Um, would you compare this to something like The Hustler? Because he did that as well, right? Yeah, he did The Hustler. I would not compare this to The Hustler. I, I mean, he has the Paul Newman swagger. Um, Paul Newman just has this presence on screen, so I think a lot of people might because he has that little swagger but i would not compare it at all in a sense of like i said edit storytelling direction all those different features is just i think a little bit more inviting than the hustler the hustler has definitely a beat to it that it's sometimes if you don't have the background in the historical stance of the hustler it's kind of boring Mm -hmm. and so i think i hear a lot of people go i watched the hustler and i didn't it was boring. It's guys playing pool. And but then you kind of explain to them about that movie. You're like, oh, maybe I should recheck it out because that movie becomes famous because of the context of when it came out, where Harper is made in its time period, but it's more easier to understand. And that's pretty much what I've done with my movies is like, can a person today without the historical background that I have about this time, can they just get a glimpse of what life was back then and be invited into that story. Yeah. No. And, and you saw this on HBO max, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's still on there, but. Okay. But that's what I I love about them. 
it's got like, HBO Max. Yeah, that's what I love about it is that they have all kinds of movies because they have the Turner Classic Hub on there. And so yeah. you, you just never know the kind of movies you're going to find on there. Um, yeah. That's another discussion because I think ever since it's been Max, I feel like they're not as it's not as robust and not switching as often as it used to. Like always, always was HBO Max January 1st, what just came and what's leaving. Let's make sure. And I just feel that it's not as robust as it used to be. Yeah. But we'll see going forward. Yeah. That's another, that's another stream, huh? <laughs> right. It could be, honestly, because it's just so hard to find some of these movies because they're usually not streaming or, you know, it's, it's crazy. Oh, it's, I've been, I watched the Paul Newman documentary on Max, um, call, um, and about his wife and him. And I just kept looking for like, oh, I haven't seen this movie. I haven't seen this movie and I'm serious. Can't be found. Um, DVDs sometimes are the only place to find it, but they're pretty pricey. And so, yeah, it's, it's hard to find it. And, um, but this one, I found it. Glad I did. Just hit play. Don't know why I picked it. And it was a joy. It does have a sequel. I haven't seen the sequel yet, but hmm. it does have a sequel with the character in it. It's a two Harper or no? <laughs> I know. I forget what it's called. Drowning pool or something like that. Hmm. So it's just, the, just um, a different story with the Paul Newman playing the same character. Gotcha. All right. Well, and what score would you give it out of five? Did I give it a four? Did I give it a four? <laughs> I think I gave it a four. You're pulling out my yeah, my scores. Three and a half. Three and a half. I did give it a three and a half. And that sounds right. Uh, because I would say I lost a half a star because it gets a little long tooth at the end for me but i was probably being too harsh and probably on my rewatch i probably will bump that up to a four after i pondered it um because i rate my letterbox media i watch the phone i put it on um and sometimes i go back after i even if i haven't rewatched it and go you know what i was a little too harsh or i was mm -hmm. too nice and i changed my score but i'll probably up it to a four as i watch more paul newman movies and pondered this one more there you go. All right. Well, you're ready for no your number five. I, I cheated. I get to go twice in a row. That's right. I do. I did. I forgot my number five. Ah, oh, five minutes. Just watched it today. Just watched it today. I haven't seen it for years. And I watched it. <clears throat> um, I love this movie. Love this movie. Um, Danny Kay. Um, Danny Kay's from White Christmas. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, the most popular film that people know today. Um, he was very popular back then. Um, he um, He's just a jokester. He had that um, Dick Van Dyke, I think, a lot of people. as He doesn't do, like, as crazy as the, like, the hitting the walls and stuff like that. But his face was very expressive. He was just a funny guy. And this movie plays, uh, he plays Red. He was a... Uh, Piccolo, um, not a trumpet. I forget what that's called. I just watched it. Can't think of the name. Trombone? Um, but it's trum not trombone. It's a different type of, in the trumpet family. Mm. And, um, he was a real um, j um, big band jazz musician. Um, Benny Goodman started with the guy in real life and stuff like that. And so this is just his. Now, now don't take it as reality, a historical no. biography, nothing like that. <laughs> This is just taking names, dropping them in, and telling their own story. Um, and it's just so sweet. Um, Louis Armstrong is in it. I think this is where I fell in love with jazz. I watched it with my mom one time, and I just loved it. Um, anytime it was on Turner Classic Movie, I remember my mom would tell me it's on. We would go watch it off the cable. Um, but what I think... <coughs> sorry. What I think is in her that brings people in is it gives you such a sense of what the world is in with all the jokes mm -hmm. um, and what the world deals. Like there's a time where he accidentally unplugs the amp and then there's the DC and the, holy cow, the other type of power back then that you had to make sure 
what kind of amp he had because he had two different types of power. And so he plugs it into the wrong one and the amp blows. And, oh, no. um, and so it just gives you the glimpse of what the world was like at that time. And, it, and it's just so inviting. You don't have to know the history. And it will ask you to ask questions. Um, the girl gets polio and has to be in an iron lung and what that deals with. So it literally just covers the lifespan of this time. World War II is mentioned. Um, and the music people, like I said, Louis Armstrong. Um, I think it holds up. You could say, like, because there's a time Louis Armstrong, because, you know, he's he's up and coming. He's African-American. And Danny K does this lovely impression of him and kind of makes fun of him and does, but you could just see it's an impression that you have to love the character to impress the person. You know, like if you mm -hmm. watch Saturday Night Live, the best impressionists usually love the person they're impersonating. Exactly. If, they, right. if they're just impersonating them because they don't like them, hardly that ever works. It's never, it's never good. And you just see the, it's just, it's a sweet story. And like I said, if you don't like old movies, you don't like musicals, well, this is a great one because the music's in it, but it's done because they're singing is supposed to be doing on stage. No one's like driving their car and saying, let me just sing a random song and move it over. So there's just songs and it's a classic Danny Kaye. If you've never seen him outside of White Christmas, go find this one. It's only on DVD. I don't, I haven't seen it on streaming. Um, but it is a great one. Nice. Well, I personally haven't seen it, but you and I will be reviewing it later this year. Yes. So stay tuned for that. That will be coming out uh, December 30th of this year. So We'll do a I'm deep dive into that. this one. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing, too. You bring up a good point about old movies is that I mean, you could try to do deep dives, but sometimes there's not a lot of behind the scenes details. There's not a lot of stuff you could look into, really. Just crazy. Um, you got it. You, yeah, it's when you, you have to look to other movies and other historical um, uh, um, things that are happening around it. Like this, this DVD has no special features, zero. Oh, wow. Um, and so you have to look at interviews, but even at that point, you could still do a deep dive into that time period and what it was saying and what kind of message it was doing. And, and I don't want to go too far. That's a whole, that would be later. That's a whole other podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we will move on to my number five, which is Dracula from 1931. So, to me, this is probably the best Universal Monster movie. And I think the big reason why is because of Bela Lugosi. I mean, this scene right here is one of my favorites just because of his eyes. Like, he doesn't say anything. It's just the intense look he gives. And that's something that I really love about old movies, especially closer to the silent era. Because, you know, sound was either brand new or limited or whatever. So they had to use their physical expressions and their, you know, hand movements and gestures and whatnot. So to me, this is a, a great example of that because, um, you know, it's like I said, it's right after the silent era and they have a little German expressionism, which is a very interesting style and whatnot. And yeah, no, I, I just love this movie so much. Um, I saw it for the first time two or three years ago. And it still holds up. I've seen it probably five or six times now. It's really, really excellent. I I think I've seen it once when I was like a teenager. Hmm. I haven't seen it since, so I need a I need to revisit it. Well, you so, gotta check it out. I Go do. Revisit. That needs to be on my list. I remember I liked it. I just remember where this is one of those movies where Dracula the book in this movie set up so much of the vampire lore. That if you don't read the book and you don't see this movie, a lot of the stuff, like even just random vampire movies, you need to kind of know the history because they always play a nod, I feel like, to this. And what's the other one? Soft too? What's the? Nosferatu. Yeah, that one. So, like, I feel like those three aspects, if you were into vampires and that stuff, those three are like, you need to see. So. 
Like, that's absolutely. when I watched it. I was doing a vampire craze because I got into interview with the vampire. So oh, that movie, okay. I said, oh, I need to watch all the movies. And gotta so, go back. <laughs> I gotta go back. Yeah. Nice. Got a couple comments here. Sub caveman. Hey caveman. This is indeed a live stream. <laughs> <laughs> the, but yeah. Um, anything else I want to add to it? Well, I have more in depth thoughts on it on uh, episode eight of Real Little Movies. So if you want more in depth on my thoughts on it, go ahead and check that out. But yeah, I think it's it really is the best Universal monster movie because after this one, especially once we got into the 40s, they really went down in quality. So if you want to see some quality, entertaining uh, horror movies, this is a good one to start out with, I think. So where do you like just random question? Black uh -huh. um, Creature of the Black Lagoon. Is that Universal, right? It is. I haven't seen that one yet. So once I okay. see it, then I'll update. But. I'm kind of going through all of them chronologically. So I just saw the third or fourth sequel to all of the Universal Monsters. <laughs> I think I think you'll I think you maybe should pick this one up as much for me in the sense of just the historical content of the black creature of black lagoon. So many tropes that are in scary movies today you feel mm -hmm. come from that too. So um what are the other ones? Frankenstein, right? I, I haven't I was never into the big universal monster things. Hmm. Well, me so. neither. Not till recently, honestly. Um, let's see. There's Frankenstein, Dracula, Visible Man, Jekyll and Wolf Hyde. Man, Jekyll and Hyde. Uh -huh. That's okay. another one. Phantom I'm just mad when the, when the Tom Cruise, that universal kickoff, dark universe or whatever. Oh yeah. And it kick off because I love Russell Crowe and I wanted a Russell Crowe, Jekyll and Hyde movie so badly. So, but that's a whole other one. But I mean, it's not, doesn't that just make you feel like Halloween looking at that picture? Who doesn't? Oh, yeah. Who doesn't? Oh, yeah. I, I've i dressed up as him before with the cowl and everything. It's awesome, man. I, I love it so much. With the slick back hair? Oh, yeah. Everything. Oh, wow, wow, <laughs> I had fake teeth and oh, yeah. It was awesome. We need pictures. Caveman wants to see the pictures. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're on my Instagram. Yeah. Let's see, the vampire looks like the one used in Night Stranger 1952. I don't know if I've seen that one. I have not either. Well, I'm sure they base it off of it because Bela Lugosi's depiction is like the quintessential iconic, iconic one. Um, yeah. Even though it's not the first one, it's definitely the one that made it really popular. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on to... Your number four. Thin Man. Oh. Have you seen this one? No, but it is on my list for either this or next season. So so I've been privileged. I have a mom who loves movies as much as I do. Um, and she buys and collects as much as I do. Like she has a bigger criterion collection than I do. Oh wow. <laughs> and, yeah. And I borrow I borrow them like like right now, I have like six or seven from her because why not? Yeah, why not? Um, and I remember she used to love The Thin Man. And then she got this box set of DVDs, had The Thin Man on it. And it was a nice box set. And I just put them on and I just had so much fun with them. And I think there, there are two detectives that, um, that work together, they fall in love and they just have a mystery they solve. There are many sequels. So when everyone says, everyone, we just, so many sequels today, back in the day, they didn't, oh no, they made oh, no, they did. <laughs> sequels out the wazoo that you could get. And uh, all of them are fun. I say, start with the first one. It's so inviting. It doesn't matter what decade this movie was made in. It is just fun. There's, I can't think of any reference that stops you from enjoying it. Like, because sometimes when you watch these older movies, like once again, you need the context, you need to know a little bit more. But this one, I don't think you do. Um, is it this one or is it the second one? Um, you get a young James Stewart in and stuff like that. So it is, it, the banter, um, get a strong man with a strong woman and just, great good old time nothing nothing to complain about 
<laughs> really check it out. It's just fun. Fun. Now, I think Warner Archive released a bunch of these on Blu-ray and I think DVD yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, so check those guys out. Warner Archive's got some great, great they're, restored films yeah. there. And they're on Max all the time. They're, mm. they're, these, these ones I've seen, they're either on Max or Prime, Criterion, Sat. Like, I've seen them all over the place. So they're very popular movies. Um, I'm always shocked when people don't talk about the thing man as much because anyone who watches classic movies or has ever seen it, you go, oh, this is great. Nothing, nothing's wrong with it. Yeah. Well, That's I'm looking forward to, yeah, I'm looking forward to checking it out. Cause you know, like you, everybody tells me you got to check it out. Cause it, it's a great series. Is it like a whodunit type of thing or more of just like they're trying to solve a crime? It has its own tone of both of those. I would say it's a mix of both of those. It's okay, cool. it's um, Agatha Christie meets a little bit of, uh, I, I say Dick Tracy in a mm. sense of, if you read the comics of like the ridiculousness of Dick Tracy with the flat top. It's not that crazy, but you know how that just some situations that Dick Tracy gets them in, how do you do this, right? And um but more of the fun cleverness of an Agatha Christie story, but all comedy. So that's, oh, yeah. that's what I think. That sounds like, like my I, I, right there. <laughs> I think I wish Wes Anderson would actually do a remake of this. Because it's an offbeat comedy that I think could play well with the type of story today. So that's what I would want. There it is. Let's get Wes Anderson to make one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's write a petition. <laughs> Rechange.org. All right. Oh, I forgot to mention the score I gave on my last one. So mine is five oh, out of yeah, five. Well, and then what about you for this one? I think this is a four out of four. Four yeah, out of five. Uh, four Sorry. out of five. Yep. You're good. <laughs> yeah, four. Uh, yeah. No, it, it's, it's not perfect. Like, just because I give it a four doesn't mean to me a five means it's perfect for its genre it's perfect film whatever it's it's just the black but sometimes i just love it so much i have to give it a five this one you will find has some flaws but in in the comparison it i think is um i think the sequel i liked a lot better than this one hmm. so i think that's why because the yeah, i've truly there's i want to say five or six of them and I loved all of them. And they were such a great joy to watch. So, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I'll probably bring you on to talk about these then, because I want to watch all of them and then maybe do a like a Thin Man Cinematic Universe or something like that. I think that'd be fun. All right. Well, What's your number four? My number four is Touch of Evil. So reason why Citizen Kane is not on this list is because I like this movie more than Citizen Kane. <laughs> well, that's a whole nother conversation we need to have, okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to say, I haven't seen Touch of Evil, so I can't have that conversation. Well, there you, well once you watch it, then maybe we'll... <laughs> no. Um, no, what I love about this movie is uh, it shows how even back, this came out in 58, even back in the 50s, and even earlier, they still had amazing camera techniques. They had amazing acting and dialogue. Um, one of my favorite scenes in it is something you see Tarantino kind of do a lot, where there's a camera in the back seat, and then you see the driver in the front actually driving the car. So they do that in this movie with Charlton Heston. He's driving the car. Um, so yeah, like Orson Welles, he's the director and one of the stars in it. He really pushed the envelope and was way way ahead of his time and this movie to me really really shows that um i don't want to give it away because it's such a good story all i could say is um if you're into film noir or detective stories or anything like that you'll really enjoy this one because this to me is one of if not the best film noir in my opinion and uh i saw it for the first time i want to say two or three years ago and then recently i got the collection with it 
because there's three different versions of this movie. <laughs> the Kino? Yeah, the Kino Lorber one. Yep, yep. Uh, one of them. That one's so expensive. That, even when it's half off, it's still like yeah. thirty-five bucks. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't remember how I got it. I think I had an Amazon gift card or something. But um, what's cool about it is each version. There's a theatrical, which is the one I've seen so far, and then there's a because Orson Welles did not like the final cut that the studio did of it. He didn't get that right. So there's a memorandum he wrote out that was like. Uh, I can't remember. It was probably like a hundred pages long of what he wanted the film to be. So then they, the Kino Lorber and whoever owns the rights to it made a version of that. That's pretty close to what he wanted it to be. And then the third one is the international cut of the movie. So I haven't seen all of them yet, but the theatrical is where I would start out with it. Especially like I said, if you like detective shows and all that, and not like the cheesy ones like NCIS, although those are fun. This is more like uh, like Justified or, um, oh, what's that famous one with McConaughey and Harrelson? Uh, I can't remember. But it, True it's, crime. I think True so, crime. yeah. True Crime, I think, is what it is. But, yeah, this is a great, great, great film. So, um, so, so um, Orson Welles did not edit his version. No, uh-uh. Someone okay, did so after the fact. Okay. Because there was that other movie, I forget what it's called. It was released on um, Criterion. It's one of his ones about the family that's rich in a small town. Mm, I know uh, Sam Persons. That's it. That's it. Um, they didn't want Orson Welles to tinker of it and literally cut it and then burnt the negatives. So he couldn't go and re-edit it. So we will never see his version because yeah. they literally set the film negatives on fire. And that's how much the studio was not happy with Orson Welles. So that's a whole nother conversation. But I mean, I love that we, we could see the three different versions. I love that Kino puts that out there. And um, I, for one, I want the Blade Runner to be re-released with the five cuts again. You know, they had that run on Blu-ray and then um, HD DVD. And they need to do that again because Watching the different versions allows you to understand film more, how they change a story and stuff like that. But no, I this is on my watch list. I think it's shows up on Criterion Channel to stream. Does it? Okay. Yeah. So. Well, and what's cool too with different versions is it could show you how editing can really change the pace of a film and and the um, I don't know just everything about it. <laughs> you know, because I, I was remembering I had a class, a film class in college where they showed it's the same scene over and over again, like a man looking at a baby and they changed the music for each one and it changed the whole tone. So it, it's crazy how editing can totally change the whole the whole. Well, point yeah. Of when I took my film class, um, we watched Psycho mm. and they said, how many stabs were there? How many times did she get stabbed? And everyone was like high numbers. And he goes, nope. She gets like, I forget what it was. It's like three or four. But the music <laughs> at, um, is about 12 or 13 or something like that. So you go, you wrote down how many times you heard the sound. You did not write how many times you went like this. And so, oh, wow. yeah. And so music, all of it plays into it. And so I love, I love what, Ke- I think Kino is killing it with classic movies right now. And even martyr movies, and they doing these 4Ks, and they're giving you all the information and as many special features they can get their hands on. They want to give it to you. The only, I think, only next studio that comes next to it is Francis Ford Coppola's own that he does, and that's about it. So yeah, yeah. So I remember the name of the show, True Detective. So if you're a fan of True, True Detective, Detective, you'll like this, I think. Was this movie banned? Did I read that right? Was this one, which? I, I don't know. I th- okay. It was either this one or Magnificent Ambersons. Was it one Andy from Shanghai? One of his movies was, though. I, I think I remember. Was banned. That. His last movie should have been banned. That, that's crazy. That I don't know when that officially got released. I was shocked. Um, no, or is it Kubrick, The Killing? Is it The Killing that I might oh, be thinking Kubrick. of? That's Kubrick, yeah. Okay. 
Was that banned? Uh, I think like most of Kubrick's fans were banned at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but off the top of my head, I, I can't think of a specific one. Okay. Is Charles from Heston young and not known for it, you know? Because Charles L. Heston, when he later in his career, just gets what I call the John Wayne complex. I'm just going to show up. I'm going to say my lines. Mm -hmm. Very little acting. Mm -hmm. uh, is this young before he's big? Is You know what I mean? Is, is yeah. He... Oh, I would say so. Because, well, he's kind of riding off the wave from uh, Ten Commandments. That just came out, I think, two years before this one. But he's... He's really good at acting in this. Like, if you're used to him in Ten Commandments or uh, Planet of the Apes, which he's fine in, but he's a little cheesy. No, this is his best acting. I think he okay. really, he really delivers it. It's amazing. Awesome. It's it's been it's in my Kino Lober cart for how oh, two years. Whenever that 4K came on, it's been in the cart. But when it gets half off, I usually I go I could buy two movies. For the same price, and I yep. haven't seen this one, but I need to see one because I love Orson Welles. I love Orson Welles, so I need to see it. Yeah, I agree. You definitely. I wish we lived closer so I could borrow it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, or uh, let's see. Well, there are methods. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I'm an innocent guy. <laughs> I'm not a pirate. What? No. No, there's no touch of evil here. That's right. <laughs> exactly. That's a lame joke. I'm not feeling well, people. If you don't laugh at yeah. my jokes, let's blame it on my cold. Well, let's let's move on from this touch of evil and move on to something that's a brief, brief encounter. encounter. <laughs> wow. What can I say? So the director is David Lean. Right? You have yes. Lawrence of Olivia. Uh -huh. oh, what other movies? I mean, Dr. Zhivago. Uh, Zhivago. Bridge on River Kwai. Uh, yeah. I mean, this guy becomes the Spiel Spielberg, the Scorsese, whatever he does, it's gold. And Brief Encounter. If you watch it, so many films, so many films are come from this. And it's such a cool story. Uh, it's a love story. The woman has agency, strong agency. This man has a story. They're just equals who need to fall in love. She's married. They meet. It's around this. I watched it. I bought the Criterion David Lean collection thing. Mm. And um, I watched. It's a foreign film. It's an Asian foreign film. Criterion just did a 4K of it. I forget what it's called. Shoot. Uh, but literally, it was told it's this film was its main inspire. And I said, I own that movie, and I love that one. So I watched this one, and it's just, I don't care if you like black and white movies or not black and white movies. I don't care if you don't like love stories or you hate love stories. This movie is good. You will like it no matter what. And if you don't like it, you don't like film. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I, I don't understand. It is, I was just blown away. And it's one of the few movies I watched back to back. Mm. So I finished it. And then the very next day, I watched it again. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So the only other movie that I do that with is like Batman Begins. I, I, I could watch that every day. That's um, but not uh, on all the President's Men. And yesterday, those are my four that I could watch every day, and I will be completely happy with. <laughs> so it's. Have you seen it? Have you seen this one? No, but it will. I will be in uh, February. It's on for my romantic movies month. So uh, definitely gotta watch it sooner than that. It's great. Now, is the movie you're thinking of in the mood for love? Yes, that's it. Okay, that's it. cool. Because when you were explaining it, I was like, this sounds like in the mood for love. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. That is this cool. one. I love that movie. So I, I'm I'm excited to check this one out too. Then, when when you watch it, so many like love lost movies. Hmm. This is it. This is they steal it from this. So 
You know, when Harry Met Sally is the brace of the new romantic comedies of the love is to be found. That's what I call them. Like, love is not lost, but, you know, whatever. Is this before Casablanca? Uh, let me check real quick. It's going to last because I want to say. It's after Casablanca. It's after. So the whole love is lost, like Casablanca is the love is, I call love is lost, right? You don't, they don't get together right right and so this movie i feel focuses just does it better I, you, everyone relates to it because maybe we'll talk to casablanca casablanca sometimes seems out of reach to younger people today because it's definitely living in its timepiece the mm-hmm. romance is in its time the politics everything that plays into casablanca is the world around it this is to be two people today situation. So that's why I say it's a little bit more tangible mm. in that in that regard. So yeah, yeah. Well, I I won't disagree with you. I haven't seen it yet, but from what it sounds like, uh, it's timeless, which is why they're able to remake oh. it. So yeah, and it's a five out of five. All right, I kind of figured. What was that- your touch? Yeah, what was your touch of evil? Did you oh hear my me goodness. Show on that? I keep forgetting to do it. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I'll just say it right now. The rest are all five out of five for me. <laughs> I think I think the rest are five out of five for me too. So if we forget, um, I'll we'll mention it at the end, I guess, because I got a slide with all of it on it. But all right. Well, let's move on to my number three, which is Twelve Angry Men. All right. So I just watched this for the first time a couple weeks ago. <laughs> really? That was your first time? It was my first time. With, yep. with, with Turner fan? Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. Wow. It's one I've been wanting to see, but it's one of those, you know, I have it in my watch list. And then when you go to watch it, it's not there anymore because it just, it goes everywhere. You know, it's either an HBO, it's on Canopy. It goes all over the place. So I was very lucky it was there at this time. <laughs> Um, but what I love about this movie is that they prove that in old Hollywood, you could have great movies with very little scenes. All of it is with the acting in this movie. All these actors are top notch. They all have distinct personalities and differences of opinions and whatnot. It's just a very fascinating look at, you know, prejudice and our, how our opinions on things could affect uh, yeah, uh-huh. others around us so no i i love it i think it's just as applicable today as it, it was back then um it, it it's like a brief I would, encounter it's i would timeless. say more i would say like right now if you watch it it would be applicable really yeah. much right now like go watch oh, yeah. it yeah absolutely and and i'm still debating if i want to buy the kino lorber or the uh criterion because they both released it i'm like uh i don't know which one i want but <laughs> So I have I have the Criterion one, and I'm probably going to buy the Kino Lover because it also has the remake that's also really great on it. Oh, the '90s um, one. Yeah, and then it has different special features, and I'm a special feature kind of guy. So this is one that I will probably buy. Have both. There's mm-hmm. not many. I don't do that. Um, Blu-ray to 4K. If I if I do that, I would sell my other one, except for special features. So like, um, I have the special Citizen Kane DVD that came with a documentary that was only on a special feature. So I took oh, out my, no. um, so when I bought it on 4k, I literally took off my broken Blu-ray, whatever. That's not good. <laughs> yeah. And I switched in the DVD thing. Um, but no, um, this is classic. This is good. This was, um, a teleplay, um, which is a teleplay is a script written for TV, Mm -hmm. um, smaller scale um, and lower budgets and stuff like that, but no TV show, no TV script studio would pick it up and they got made into a movie. And classic actors, actors that you will know all over Hollywood. That's that's amazing. You will see them. So it's a great one, great one to start with. Absolutely. And, you know, you mentioned the teleplay. I think something that 
I learned that was pretty cool is some of the actors from the teleplay are in this movie too. So yep. as the same characters, I, I think that's just really cool that they recognize their talent. And it was turned into a play, wasn't it? What did they turn it into a play? I want to say it was after the fact because the TV yeah. one I think is more based on that, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Could be wrong. Yeah. But, but a few yeah. good men, if you've seen the few good men with Tom Cruise, you could see where this was the writing was inspired by this because a few good men play took place all because the Fugitman was a play first took mm. place all in a courtroom. And then when the movie came up, made it outside the courtroom. So it did the opposite. <laughs> it did the opposite. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah that's to my understanding. Too, that's what, what I'm, yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Love and it. then before I forget five out of five. <laughs> all right. Let's move on to your number two. The apartment. The apartment. What's funny is uh, Jack Lemmon plays uh, Henry Fonda's character in the remake of 12 Angry Men. That's right. That's right. Um, all right. So I'm part of a movie club with some of my, um, um, these two young gentlemen, they're, um, they're in their early 20s. And we started a movie club because they were like, I love movies. I love movies. And so we pick three movies to watch. And then we get together and talk about and one of them picked the apartment and I was like, I didn't want to watch this. But then I saw Fred Murray's in it and I love him from Happiness Millionaire. And I like Jack Lemmon because I know him from Grumpy Old Men and Shirley MacLaine. I was like, really her? I don't like her. She's, you know, I just know her. I'm the old self and she's always an annoying character in the movies. Right, right. How is she going to be this love interest to Fred McMurray and Jack? Yeah, I didn't. That was baffling. Um, who's the director? What's the name? Uh, Billy Wilder. Billy Wilder. And so I went, okay, well, loved it. Cheryl mm -hmm. McLean is beautiful, classic. She plays the role perfectly. Her emotion, Jack Lemmon does it. So Fred McMurray is a boss who wants to use Jack Lemmon's apartment to have an affair with Cheryl McLean because Fred McMurray is married. And uh, Jack Lemmon and Cheryl McLean kind of fall in love in the process and it's just this beautiful how how you like i just described that and you go that doesn't sound any interest but how they tell the story how they do the story you're going to enjoy it it's so inviting yeah, characters are so relatable once again we all live in an apartment we all have we all know about affairs we all know a guy who wants to help out gets put in a sticky situation because a boss asks them to you know, we could be related to all these characters without needing to know anything more beyond that. Um, and so it is just a great film. It's a five out of five. Um, and this is another Kino Loro that just came out on 4K. Mm. It's in my card to buy. <laughs> yeah. So. You just got to click. No. <laughs> now, my bank account needs to say, you could not buy me. <laughs> That's what exactly. I Exactly. Right. <laughs> well. I have seen this movie. It was a couple of years ago. I probably need to rewatch it because I didn't like it the first time I saw it. Um, I'm more of a fan of Sunset Boulevard, Double Indemnity, Sabrina, and uh, Some Like a Hot. I like those ones a lot more. But I, I think I want to rewatch this one because. Well, okay, if, if you if you are so, those are all directed by Billy Wilder, right? Yep. Yep. Okay, so here's the thing: if you're gonna Billy Wilder, I feel is a two has two like david lean you have two different types of directors you have the small independent guy trying to figure out director and that's that criterion collection then you have your big hollywood um lawrence of olivia you know the doctors of like if i compare lawrence of olivia to brief encounter lawrence of olivia is always going to win right you know what i mean and so billy wilder when you look at it as that, this is, I would say Billy Wilder being a director plays little to no purpose on this film. Mm. He, he's not, he's, he's directing it and it has, he knows how to control the camera, but that's it. You're not going to get a Billy Wilder movie, like some like a hot and some like you. So what I would say, don't, when you rewatch it and sometimes I would not re I would not watch this in a Billy Wilder 
trilogy or comparison. Blue mood. Okay. Because this movie, this movie will always fall short to comparing. Like, it's like Steven Spielberg and say, I'm going to watch Duel. Is Duel ever going to be able to beat E.T. or no. Jurassic Park? Right. No. no. But is Duel still a great movie on its own and can't believe Steven Spielberg did that as their first thing? Holy cow, can't believe that, right? Duel's still great on its own. But if you compare them to other Steven Spielberg movies, it gets lost. So I would say when you go to revisit this, I, I talk with my hands. I'm seeing all my hands in the video. Um, <laughs> <You're kidding. laughs> um, don't, don't do it in the Billy Wilder mindset. Do it as a, a classic love story mm. mindset, if that makes sense. Okay, cool. Well, I'll try that because, you know, I was like, oh, man, what is <laughs> this? is nothing. Like I, when did you watch? <laughs> where, where did you watch them like close to each other? Were you doing a Billy Wilder marathon? Or... Well, I did, I did that recently, but um, the only one I had seen before this were Double Indemnity and Sunset Boulevard. I watched those maybe a year or two before I saw this one. And I was like, oh, this is different. <laughs> this is not like this. Yeah, other it's two. different. It's like if you do 39 steps in Hitchcock, like you're doing a Hitchcock marathon, you do 39 steps, you're like, oh, well, this movie doesn't hold up. But right. then when you watch 39 steps on your own, you're like, this isn't bad. Or Torn Curtain, a lot of people don't like Torn Curtain. And I'm like, I love Torn Curtain. But I would, if I was to compare it to other Hitchcock movies, I go, that's oh, a little weak. But the movie itself is still good. You get what I'm saying? It's like yeah, how sometimes yeah. how you view a movie. So, so I'm I sorry I totally just put my strong on defending on that. Right? No, no, you're I, good. I figured I, this would happen. Billy, <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big Billy Wilder fan either. So, um, like Double Indemnity, I enjoyed. Um, I was just really mad when Criter I bought the Blu-ray and literally two months later, Criterion announces their 4K. So. I have bad taste, but like some like a hot. I didn't. I need to rewatch those. I watched those when I was like, like twelve. Oh, and I okay. just, again, like like love those. So, but yeah. yeah. Well, I recommend not watching them in the mindset of this movie. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's a great movie. Mm. All right, so five out of five, I assume, right? Oh. Why did you even ask? <laughs> uh, yeah. no. All right. So then we'll go on to my number two, which is Metropolis from 1927. All right. So well, if you want to hear something scary? What's that? I haven't seen it. Oh, Evan, no. I know. And I'm a sci fi geek. I'm a sci fi geek. Uh -huh. I haven't seen this. Well, I'll, I'll make the sales pitch for you to watch it then. Uh, <laughs> no, what, what's great about this is if you've seen Star Wars, Blade Runner, even Star Trek, you'll notice a lot of it comes from this movie. And what I love, though, about it is because Star Wars, you could kind of consider to be more of a space fantasy than science fiction. This one is full on science fiction where the whole uh, concept is, you know, you have the people who live on top of the city, the like the wealthy, they're kind of the like the bourgeoisie, you know, like the upper class, right? And then yeah. underneath the city, you have all these people who are slaving away, trying to make everything run and work. And basically it's a fight against the two. And um in the midst of that, there's a a girl, her name's Maria, and she's trying to lead the the people from underground to the top, kind of lead a revolution. And and so the people on top, that's this picture here. They, they create a, a fake one. That's what that robot is, is a false Maria. And basically it's just the, the concept of, you know, standing up to tyranny and right. But also um, like a famous, famous line from this is the mediator between the head and the hands is the heart. And I just love that, you know, how, you know, some people are more working with their hands, some people more with their hand or with their head rather, just learn how to work together is how you improve and make a better society. So that's why I love this movie. So would you, um, uh, what's that movie with the train? Um, Chris Evans in it? Have you seen that one? Uh, no, I haven't. They did a snow, snow, oh my God, I can't think oh, of snow it. Oh, uh, no, uh, Snowpiercer? 
Yeah, sounds that sounds very similar to that kind of a story. Mm-hmm. So, and I love science fiction. So I love that you said that. You know, so there's a that you know, ever since when Science Fiction Channel changed their name to Sci-Fi. Remember, I don't know if you remember that happening. I do remember that. Yeah, I always now explain the difference as I go. There's a difference between science fiction and then sci-fi. Star Wars, sci-fi. It's mm-hmm. fun, easy, whatever. Science fiction, doom. You got to yes. think a little bit more. Yes. So that's how I compare the difference, which we could probably do a show about that. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, this movie right here will make you think. And yeah. they incorporate a lot of like biblical stuff into it, too. It's really fascinating. And I'm just grateful yeah. that the version we have is the best version we're going to have. It's the is it on complete- streaming. Uh, I think it was on Pluto or something like that. The problem is there's two versions of the movie, one from the 80s that they put in like Pat Benatar, Adam Ant, all these singers in it, Freddie Mercury, which is fine, but it it kills the whole mood of the movie for me. And it's like 30 minutes shorter than the actual version of the movie, The Complete Metropolis. Well, I need to check it out. Yeah. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, on a, I'm on a sci-fi, a science fiction kick right now. Yeah. So, yeah. Kino Larber. Kino Larber is the one who did this version. Of course. Right? <laughs> of course. I mean, course. this should have been this should have been sponsored by Kino Larber. Yes. I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah, we've given him so many shout outs. Come on, guys. No. <laughs> Make sure you put them in the tag. I Let's think I will. Kino Larber. Come on. Yeah. Uh, one more thing. I just love this movie so much. What's cool about the complete version is they found the original sheet music and they re-recorded with the, uh, was it the Berlin Philharmonic? I think it was. And it's just one of the best scores I've ever heard. It's so good. Um, you can see where Star Wars got its inspiration, where, well, pretty much everything John Williams. It's so good. I love it. Dude, so, this, I'm just saying that that guy looks like, uh, what's his name, actor? <laughs> Holy cow. Daniel Day Lewis, and that guy looks a little like Christopher Lloyd from Star. Um, <laughs> like, that, that looks like that looks like the Abe Lincoln of Daniel Day Lewis and Christopher uh-huh. Lloyd in Back to the Future, and they're having That's a great discussion about the robot woman behind them. Yeah. Well, you bring it back to the future, though. There is a couple scenes in this where that guy with the the black gloved hand, he's doing like crazy faces like Doc Brown does. So they took from this movie too. Probably every sci-fi, but yeah, no, it's good. If you love star Wars, everything, science fiction, sci-fi, all of that, you'll like it. Now I will warn you, it is a silent film. So keep that in mind. <laughs> and I don't mind silent films. That's I love silent. So. Oh, me too, man. It's so, but if you're getting into silent films, I think this is a good one to start out with in my opinion. Because, it, well, if it influences so much today, I think that's the key for our list. There, yeah. All of this, like, it relates to so many movies have been inspired from it, so they feel familiar. Right. So it's just it's just really nice. So I'm going to go try to find it right after I get off the stream. Yes, yes. And if you're curious, I guess you could find the 80s one, too. I don't recommend it, though. <laughs> I'm going to watch it and like it more just to spite you. <laughs> just to spite me? Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. yeah, yeah. Watch out for my loader box. The top list, original, two stars. Ugh. One with Fred and Mercury, five. And don't get me yeah. wrong. I love all those singers, but it does not fit in with this movie. <laughs> Ugh. I digress. Ready for your number one, Evan? That I cheated on? Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, we both cheated on our number ones. We did. You can't help it, right? All right. Go for it. Number one. Number one. Okay, we said we didn't want to like pick the most popular ones. I picked Singing in the Ring. I couldn't help myself. I tried not to, but I couldn't. This movie, musical, love it. It's so inviting. Gene Kelly, so I love that man. Um, What's his name from the Francis movie? O'Connor. Donald O'Connor? Donald O'Connor, yep. yep. Right? 
And then what's her name in the middle? Debbie Reynolds. Debbie Reynolds. That is what's her name's mom. That's Carrie Fisher's mom. That's Carrie Fisher's mom. If you read about Debbie Reynolds in her life, then you'd be shocked because she's so wholesome in here. And Debbie Reynolds is not a wholesome person. Um, <laughs> um, so, but this movie is just, it's about going from silent film to talkies. And it's, so it just allows you to understand the history. It's telling you the history of films. It's telling you the history of old films. So a person who's never seen a movie, he's never seen a musical, never seen stuff. This is a go-to one because it's just so inviting. It shows you the history of old Hollywood. It tells, it just invites you. The movie, the new movie Babylon came out and everyone's like, oh, that movie sucks. Don't watch that. <laughs> just watch Singing in the Rain. Okay, that's what you do. That's it. It's a five out of five. The 4K is amazing. It's oh, wonderful. Oh. It is. I literally stopped everyone in the family said, come look at, this is why we have 4K. Look at it. It's beautiful. It needs to be watched. But it doesn't, don't let 4K stop you. If you just watch the film, just watch the film. All right. It's streaming, whatever. Watch the film. It's not about whatever medium you watch it. Watch the film. Yeah. No, I, I yeah. couldn't have said it better. Yeah. I have nothing else to add. I, I, <laughs> If you if you end up not liking it, I could understand that more than the apartment. Okay, I'm going to tell you that right now, because if you don't like musicals, this is a classic musical. So I could see you going away. I don't like musicals. I don't like when whatever you eat, but it's still a welcoming film on all parts. Like West Side Story, I I can't you can't get into that. I even American in Paris and how they tell certain stories. Uh, uh, you know, they're just not as, why are they singing these songs? Mm. Doesn't always make sense. Where singing and writing, every song has a clear purpose, like make them laugh. He's trying to make Gene Kelly laugh. Yeah. You know, I'm singing in the rain because I'm happy. Have you never seen, like you fell in love, right? You're married, you have a beautiful wife. I have a beautiful wife. Mm -hmm. It's raining, I'll sing in it because yeah, I'm in yeah. love. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Uh. I, I love the Good Morning song. That's one of my favorite ones to sing. Good morning. I'll turn. Good morning. I'm going to watch this. I, know, I, I just, when we talk about it, I just want to get off and watch them. I know. I really want to watch this again, too. <laughs> it's so good. No, and. It's great. What, okay, back to Metropolis a little bit. No, because um, this movie talks about how the jazz singer came in and changed the industry, you know, from silent to sound. And that's actually why Metropolis failed because it came out the year the jazz singer came out. I, yeah. The jazz singer came out. So when it came over to the U S nobody wanted to watch a two and a half hour long sci-fi silent film. They wanted to watch songs with music or, or movies with um, songs and audio. Well, I haven't seen the film since you're going to say it. Wasn't the po politics of the film also a play where, because when, what year did that movie, Jazz singer come out right. 19, uh, 28. 28. 28. So you're coming out like they wanting happy movies, right? They don't. They want feel good movies. So I think talkies and then the material also played into it, right? Oh, yeah. Based on what I've read, like the Monopolis is not a happy go lucky film. No, no, no. <laughs> it's a very bleak movie, and oh, uh, but. I love Singing in the Rain too, man. I, I could watch so, it anytime. Because if you look at from like 1930s to almost after World War II, movies needed to be happy. Always have a positive light. Yep. Very rare the big hits were sad or lonely. They might have sad scenes in it, but that wasn't the driving force behind the story. Always was a good look. Sorry, nerded out there. Hope we, hope whoever's watching is enjoying it. <laughs> I know. I hope we didn't scare you away, but we promise you, it's a really good movie. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We can handle it now. We're more mature than the people in 1928. That's right. Well, it's no difference. Like in you know Schindler's List, it's a tough movie to watch, but it's a movie you need to watch. At least, even though I haven't watched it, I haven't <laughs> seen it either. 
I haven't had the guts. So we need to watch it. Yeah, I have it right here. I just haven't put it in yet. I don't even own it. And just to know, I'm a big Steven Spielberg fan. I even have the TV shows he directed. I own them because Steven Spielberg directed them. <laughs> but I don't own Schindler's List. But that's another topic for another day. Yes. Ugh. Let's get to your number one a little bit. It's well, I wouldn't say happier than singing in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I wouldn't either. All right. My number one is Casablanca. So if anyone here is a fan of the you channel, cheated. You, you, I know. You, know you cheated. You cheated. Say, <laughs> say I cheated. I cheated <laughs> because I love this movie so much. I broke my own rules to, to have it on. I want any excuse I can to talk about Casablanca. Um, I just reviewed it again for uh, the hundredth episode of really old movies. I was like, I got to do my favorite movie of all time. I can't just not talk about it. Um, no, what I love about this movie, I love the acting. I love this, the love story between Rick and Ilsa. It's so classic, uh, quintessential, and uh, the writing, the dialogue. Every time I watch it, I notice something new and different just because there's so many people talking and different characters and whatnot. that You miss a lot, so you have to watch it at least five or six times. But, um, yeah, if you want, I, I'd say it's a romance, but more of a... I'd say more of a masculine type romance movie, if that makes sense. You know, it's not a super lovey-dovey film. And and I guess it's like The Lover's Lost, like you were talking about. Uh, yeah. It, I don't know if it started it, but it's definitely a, a popular <laughs> version of that. But no, I, I love this movie so much. I love it so much that I bought the book based on the director who directed this movie, all because I wanted to know, you know, how on earth did they <laughs> come up with this? Because... It should not have been what it is, you know. It was just your typical movie of the week, you know. Michael Curtiz, who directed it, he was a journeyman director, directed over 100 movies. He's not one of those like uh, David Lean or one of those who has a very distinct style, you know. Just everything meshed together and lightning struck, and it all worked out beautifully. And, uh, oh, yeah, I, I love it so much. <laughs> so I've seen it. I've tried to watch it many, many times. Yes. Um, I always <laughs> fell asleep. And then I bought it on 4K, put it in, I fell asleep. And then I woke up and then I watched it. And it's good. I'm not going to doubt it. It's going to be a go-to movie for me to fall asleep. But that's no knock. Because <laughs> you don't fall asleep to bad movies. It's true. I'm just going to put that out there. You can't get a good nap to a bad movie. So it's just, I, for me, it's, if I'm rating it, I'm rating, I forgot what I rated. I think I gave it a five out of five. If I gave it anything less, I was probably just pissed about something, but <laughs> um, uh, it's a great movie. I, it's just not my like favorite, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So um, I would, I would, I would only say like, if you just, I think some people, I'm, I, I, my question is on this one would be, well, like my son, if he had no context, would he understand what was happening? Mm -hmm. I think you just need a little bit more context to it um, to get the setting. Um, but if you're a trained, if you watch a little bit of other movies, I think this is a great one to get you into the, a deeper, like, like it's it's a great film and i think people who don't like black and white movies go get the 4k and then you realize that black and white movies are not bad it was just been the transfers onto blu-ray mm -hmm. that have been bad because black and white movies on dvd were better looking than black and white movies on blu-ray unless they had a great race distortion i've i have not upgraded a lot of my old movies all my hitchcock are on um dvd mm -hmm. i've skipped blu-ray on so many classic films because they did no restoration they ported the dvd over and it looks terrible terrible well and sometimes too they would try to get rid of the film grain it's and like dumb yeah dumb. <laughs> it's like, get rid yeah. of the get rid of the film noise 
those are your little like dots around. Sometimes you see dot, yeah. dot, 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 but yeah. don't get rid of, you know, it's, here's a good comparison. A lot of people buy vinyl records now, right? And mm -hmm. some people buy old vinyl records. And I remember I went to someone's house and they went, they put on their vinyl and I go, you know, your vinyl's dirty. And then no, it's not. That's what vinyl sounds like. Go, oh, that's what you've been listening to. I go, no. But do you have any vinyl cleaner? No. I literally went home, got my vinyl cleaner, cleaned out the vinyls, and put it on. They went, oh, oh. Said, that's what vinyl looks like. That's what vinyl listens to. You don't need to hear. No, you don't need you know, to crackle it. You you have a warm hum to a vinyl that you don't get with digital. That's clean, but you don't get dirtiness. You don't get crackly. And Blu-ray, they try to make it look smooth because they thought that's what everyone else. It's like when Turner Classic Turner guy started to colorize black and white movies. Yes. People don't watch black and white movies, so we must paint on them. That, ugh. Yes. <laughs> that was terrible. Have you seen yeah. Have you seen any movies in that were colorized like that? Well, Zorro, for a long time, was the only could see in color. Um, don't do that. I bought... I. Paid a lot of money to get the black and whites on DVD through the tents because I'm not buying the colorized. Um, I wanted, um, I did the, uh, uh, what's the Christmas movie with James Stewart? Holy cow. Oh, it's, it's a wonderful life. life. Mm -hmm. Even though, is that really Christmas? There's Christmas scenes in it, but that's not really a Christmas. Sorry, I have a complaint about that being a Christmas Christmas movie. message. Uh, <laughs> um, but I watched that because I bought the Blu ray that has both of them. Mm, okay. So, but that's a good Blu-ray that came out in black and white because they always that movie was famous and always had a good restoration. Class of Block has always had a good restoration. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't buy the Blu-ray. I had the DVD because the Blu-ray came with less special features. That's why I didn't buy it. But same with Citizen Kane. The Blu-ray looked good because it's popular and people will buy it. But that's a soapbox I need to get off right now. Huh? <laughs> no. Class of Block, it's great. Oh, yeah. Um, so I like it. All I right. need a good nap. I should put that on. I haven't been feeling well. Yeah. I well, put that on tomorrow. I don't know how you could fall asleep though during like the end of it, but <laughs> it's not the it's not the end. I fall asleep in the first twenty minutes, my friend. It's oh, one of those movies. Yeah. And I, I'm gonna tell you, I okay, I told you my favorite movie of all time, right? What is my favorite one of my favorite movies of all time? All the presidents. All the presidents of Aaron. I've seen that so many times. I put that in to fall asleep. <laughs> that's my that's my go-to fall asleep movie. So I'll take it as a compliment. Half the long guy fell asleep. Quick tangent. I actually really liked all the presidents, man. I just saw it recently. You just, and you didn't call me? I thought I did. Maybe oh. I didn't. <laughs> I can't remember. Okay. <laughs> okay. Our next episode is going to cover all the presidents, men. Let's go. All right. <laughs> No, I uh, loved it. It was so good. That's a great movie. That's anyways, a different topic. That is a different topic for another day. All right. So I'll remove that. So then just as a recap for everybody. So the top section is Evans. So we got Harper, uh, The Five Pennies, Thin Man, Brief Encounter, Apartment, and Singing in the Rain. And then for me, Dracula, Touch of Evil, 12 Angry Men, Metropolis, and Casablanca. Can can we just can we just say if we could like start a business where we send people movies like as they do that was vinyl they like here subscribe to us we send you what a great box set to open with like one yeah. of those gift sets <laughs> truly I mean I haven't seen all these movies like Touch of Evil and Metropolis um, but I'm just looking at this list what a wide variety and it's different. So different than what so many people put out there. Oh, I'm yeah. just tuning our whole, whole our own horn, buddy. Oh, yeah. amazing. <laughs> this is a great list. <laughs> Best top eleven of all time. I'm just gonna yes. say. It. Yeah. No, I'm not gonna disagree with you there because, you know, I I think because everyone watches Wizard of Oz and all that, they think all old movies are gonna be like that. But no, like, look at all these different genres and different styles yeah. and all of that. 
Well, the only one that I wish that was on the list, but it would not fall under my category. What's that movie you did that I wanted to do? It's the Christmas movie. Guys goes into abandoned homes that they leave for warmer weather. Oh, it happened on Fifth Avenue. It happened on Fifth Avenue. I didn't put that one on there because there's so many clues that you got to know the politics of that time. But that's another one. Like, what would we? What would be our sequel to this? Yeah. After you watch this, what would be your next list? Would be the next? Yeah. Well, and do that. Yeah. I wonder if we could do that. Like, because how do people buy vinyl and then ship it to you, or buy little gift sets and ship it to you? Dude, did we just come up with? If you are watching this and want to <laughs> steal this idea, we are copywriting it. There's a little C <laughs> right there. We copyrighted right. with a circle. It's yes, our the, idea. The C in Casablanca and in Dracula are the clo- or the oh, what's it called? No, I used to, Creative Commons. That's it's ours. Yeah. Can't take it. Do you have a date that we could put on here to flash on the bottom? What's today's date? Holy cow. Yeah. Uh, today um, is September 8th, 8th 2023. Yep. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Our, our channel's not that big. <laughs> someday. I don't, yeah. Someday. But that's not a bad thing. We can put that on our website. Yeah. Dude, that's not a, that's, that's not bad. Yeah, because some people I know on their websites, if they're like an author or something, they'll put a list of like books they recommend checking out. So we could do something like that. And they put the they put the links to have the Amazon whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but oh no, now we're just having a meeting online, right? <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> yeah, no, but um, what I love about old movies is so back in those days there weren't a whole lot of people in the industry per se, and so. What I love is you could consider it like a almost like a genealogy. So like you have uh, Humphrey Bogart, right? It's like okay, well, what's another Humphrey Bogart movie? Maltese Falcon. Okay, who directed that? John Huston. And then you could go and watch more John Huston or who edited it. You know, you could kind of branch out, and before you know it, you've seen over two hundred old movies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Out, yeah. I would agree. Won't complain about that. All right. Well, that's our list, guys. And is there anything you want to add, Evan, before we go? I want that post, all those posters on a t shirt. I want them on a, I just love that list. I have nothing to add. I, I can't go wrong. <laughs> you have a great top five. I have a great top six. I have more than you, and that's all that matters. Okay. That's all that matters. That's right. Well, the next time I'll do six and you'll do five. (laughs) No, at that point, you know, I'll do seven. I'm just that big of a jerk. (laughs) Well, then I won't tell you, but I'll do eight. Oh, watch out. (laughs) Uh, All right. Well, thank you all so much for watching this live stream today. And hopefully our list here will kind of help ease your minds and get you interested and intrigued with classic movies because they're great. They're diverse and, you know different uh, genres and whatnot they're just as interesting i think as modern movies are sometimes more so so yeah thank you for having me loved it absolutely and why don't you plug your channel again real quick and then we'll sign off i i don't need to really plug it you can subscribe to watch the old stuff but there's not much going on uh you can follow me on instagram i do post more regularly on that so but um and letterbox if you want to see what i'm watching but my youtube is not going well at the moment because life and i'm not a i think i think working with you will inspire me to do more so i'm excited for that yes i know i'm so excited for that too and i'm thinking we'll try to do something like this every month or something like that I, i want to continue doing a series like this yeah i love it All right. Well, thanks everyone for watching. And this has been Really Old Movies. I'm your host, Harrison Skull. This is my co-host, Evan. Take care.